Hi everybody and welcome to Cookbook Corner. My name is Hannah and today we will be making ginger snaps from Mark Bittman's How to Bake Everything. Um, the ginger snap recipe will be located on page 161 right here and offers multiple different selections and alterations in order to make the perfect holiday recipe. Today's recipe requires these following ingredients. For the wet part of the, wet, the recipe, we require two sticks of butter, one cup of molasses, um, looks like it says half a cup of packed brown sugar and half a cup of granulated sugar. Okay. For the dry portion of today's recipe, we will be using three and three cups of flour. If you are making regular ginger snaps, you will be using three and one quarter cup of flour. One heaping tablespoon of ginger, one tablespoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of baking soda, and finally, one teaspoon of regular salt. So as I said, for today's variation, I am making mocha snaps, um, which includes a slight alteration to the regular recipe. For example, like I said, we will be using less all-purpose flour and instead replacing that with half a cup of cocoa powder and two tablespoons of espresso. You will also be needing other materials such as mixing bowls and your mixer. It makes a very thick dough and it's very difficult to mix with just your hands. You'll also be needing several different measuring cups. I find having several of the same is very helpful when making this recipe. Okay, now that we've introduced all of the ingredients, let's start mixing them up. I have already got a pre-made mix ready and it is preheating the oven currently. So at 350, so we can go ahead and get those baked as well. We are adding two sticks of butter currently. Make sure that it is softened so whenever you mix it up, it will be easy to blend. Okay, come on. Next, it called for one cup of molasses, okay? Molasses, when you first open it, has a very pungent smell for some people, so um, it may be a little intense at first, but it is so worth it in the end. So we're gonna pour that cup of molasses. Make sure it's nice and even. Maybe a little more than necessary, but you know what? Can't go wrong with it being sweet. Get that excess out with a mixer. Molasses can be very sticky, sometimes a little bit hard to handle. So we will probably take a couple of minutes to get it all out. Make sure you don't get too much of it on your hands. Sometimes it uh, does not like to wash off. <laughs> all right, so I've got molasses and two sticks of butter. All right, and next our recipe calls for one half or half a cup of granulated sugar. got my half cup right here. So a half cup of granulated sugar. And then we're going to need a half cup of light brown packed sugar. And you just dump that right in there. Then you are all done with the sugars. Okay, now that we have everything in the bowl so far, this is what it is going to look like. Again, this is going to be the wet mix, which is gonna be the sugary, flavory part of it, okay? So you're going to wanna take your mixer and start slow. You're gonna to wanna to start slow, all right? And you're gonna start mixing this up until it is nice and smooth and consistent. Now that I have mixed it, um, I'm going to take 
a spatula and just kind of go around the sides, make sure it's got that smooth, creamy consistency that we're looking for, okay? Try to get the excess off the sides and mix that in as well, especially if you're terrible at using a mixer like I am. And next we will be making our dry mix that we're going to gradually put into this to form our dough. So after you are done mixing your, the first half of this recipe, it should look somewhat like this. Okay, oh, our oven's ready. So now it is time to mix in the dry ingredients. All right, this part calls for three cups of flour. Again, I am making the mocha snap recipe. So we are going to alter the original recipe just a little bit. There is our three cups of flour. Okay, this specifically calls for one heaping tablespoon of ginger. So that means you'll take your tablespoon, you'll take your ginger, and you'll be a little extra with it. Take that top off so you can have a lot more access to the ginger. And next, it calls for just a regular tablespoon of ground cinnamon. So, we'll do the same thing. Pop that top off. Make sure I kind of jiggle it around a little bit. It's a lot smoother than the ginger is. Make sure that it is even. Just the right amount of cinnamon. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're gonna next take a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, there's our baking soda and where this diverges from the original recipe. We are going to cut in half a cup of cocoa powder. Okay, there we go. And it said two tablespoons of instant espresso powder. Now I should note that we do not have instant espresso powder, but we do have this Nes Nescafe Classico um, Dark Roast. You can use whatever kind of coffee, instant coffee mix you want. I'm sure it's gonna turn out amazing in the end. There we go, okay. Now we have every single one of our dry ingredients in this bowl, okay. And soon we are going to be mixing them. But if you are making the mocha ginger snaps, this is genuinely what your mixture should look like before you mix it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna take another spatula, okay? And just fold it into itself. Make sure that it's all mixed into there, okay? okay. Once it is mostly mixed together, it kind of makes a really light brown color. Um, a little bit more, and it should be good, okay? So it's gonna look a little bit like this, kind of a very light brown, okay, with all of the mocha mixed in. All right, and now that we have this all put together, we are going to start gradually putting it into this mix as well and folding it and mixing it up until it makes a dough-like substance, okay? So we're gonna start mixing these in. What you're gonna wanna do is pick this up, okay? And just gradually shake it into this bowl, okay? Just little bits at a time. I'm going to start folding it in with this spatula and when it gets to be a little too thick for me to fold it in I'm going to start using the mixer again. Over time I 
was a little wary at first because I didn't think that it was thickening up fast enough the first time that I made these. However, after about halfway through mixing it in, you'll notice that it's going to start really gaining that dough-like substance, okay? See, this right here, as I'm mixing it in, you're gonna have that powder on top. Just make sure that whenever you are ready to move on and add more powder in there, that the powder is no longer visible on the surface of your mixture. Okay, and it's starting to get a little too thick for me to mix it by hand, so I'm going to slowly start using the mixer. As you can see, it's starting to collect quite a bit. I definitely think it's about doughy enough that we can start rolling it into two rolls to put into the freezer or the refrigerator and let it chill into dough that we can bake. Okay, now after quite some time, we have the dough mixed up and look at how soft and beautiful that is. And what they're asking us to do is to take this, split it in half and roll it into two rolls, okay? So bear with me, but here we go. We have our mound of dough on tinfoil. We do not have the right materials for today. We found out we were short some plastic wrap, but that is okay because we will make this work, ladies and gentlemen, okay? We are going to take it and it's sticky and it's a little off-putting at first, but just roll your dough until you get something like a log and about two inches in diameter. This is not ideal, but I tell you that this is going to turn out perfect. Okay, just trust the process. I'm gonna try to center it up a little bit with this tin foil. I, like I said, ideally, you're gonna wanna do this with a um, piece of plastic wrap instead. All right, once we have that roll, we're going to take this, roll it over until it is secure in there. It may not fit perfectly in there, but it is dough and we can manipulate it to fit into this bag. The most important part is that it is safe and secure and able to be made into rolls of cookie dough later on after it is chilled, okay? So you're just gonna zip that up and put this in the fridge for two hours or until it's firm. And if it is not firm for either of those times, you will leave it in overnight, okay? Okay, it has been over 24 hours since we put this in the fridge and now it is ready to take it out of the bag and the foil and see how firm it is so that we can cut this into cookie shapes. Yeah, foil was probably not the best idea, so heads up to the audience. Make sure that you use um, plastic wrap so that it comes out a little bit smoother and a little bit easier to take out the next day or whenever it is chilled. Gonna roll that onto here. That looks perfect. The directions say that what we're gonna wanna do is to take our a roll of cookie dough and cut it as thinly as possible to make thin little rounded cookies. I don't think these will come out perfectly round, but that is okay. What matters is the taste. This is about how thin I'm trying to keep it cut so that way it's not too thick and we can fit several onto here. As you can see, I'm trying to keep them just a little bit separated from each other um, so that only when they go into the oven and they rise, they do not go like combine together to make one mass cookie, but keeping as close as I can so we can fit as many as possible on our little tray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 
So I have my tray filled up with cookies. There's not much more that can be put on there. Um, and ideally with a slightly bigger cookie sheet and a bigger oven than what we are working with today, an entire roll should be able to fit onto a cookie sheet. I have about a little bit less than half of my roll left, so I'll be able to make a few more batches of it. And now it is time to put it into the oven. Okay, so we are going to place this into the oven and bake it at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes or until you notice that it is fully cooked. Okay, so I will put it into the oven and I will show you guys when we come back. Okay, it's been about a little over 10 minutes, probably closer to 12, and these cookies smell absolutely wonderful. Oh, we are all ready to pull them out and see the final result. All right, take a look at that. Yes, those look so good. They're a little close together, I will give it that. I misjudged and put them a little closer than I really should have. However, these look and smell absolutely amazing. And whenever it cooled down enough, I'll probably cut them up and have all of our coworkers try them. And it looks like our cookies are starting to cool down enough where I can take them off of our parchment paper. And all I have right now is this bowl but I thought it would look really cute to just put them in there. I'm gonna put a couple in here and then me and my coworker are going to try them out. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. The texture is good. It tastes, it's chewy, it's very, it does indeed very much taste like it's got coffee in it. Um, honestly, I think this would be a wonderful Christmas morning um, or holiday morning snack to make. Um, it would go really good with milk or hot chocolate. Um, definitely a good um, morning uh, snack to make. Uh, this turned out absolutely wonderful and I will be making this again. And you can make this too with How to Bake Everything by Mark Bittman. Okay? And this is available at our library. You can put it on hold, come and check it out if it's still available with us. Um, he's got so many other great recipes in here that I will be trying. will be trying over the course of the new year for sure. Um, so if you would also like to um, cook what cook these recipes from today or any others that we have, please make sure to like and subscribe our to our channel and keep up to date with the FCL website to see what other things that we will be doing in the future.